What if I told you that 14 wolves saved America $94 billion? In 1995, the U.S. government made a decision that seemed simple, but had a profound impact. They took 14 Canadian wolves and released them into Yellowstone National Park. What followed wasn't just the restoration of a species, but the revival of an entire ecosystem, a dying landscape, and an economic miracle that would eventually save America $94 billion. To understand how these 14 wolves managed to achieve all this, we need to go back to when things started to go wrong. Before we dive into the incredible story, don't forget to hit that like button if you're ready to hear how nature can heal itself in ways you've never imagined. Let's rewind to the early 1900s, when wolves were viewed as nothing more than pests, dangerous predators that needed to be eliminated. The government even hired official wolf hunters whose sole job was to trap, shoot, or poison every wolf in sight. By 1926, the last wolf pack in Yellowstone had been wiped out, and the world celebrated. Little did they know what they had just lost. At first, everything seemed fine. No wolves? No problem, right? Wrong. Over the next few decades, things started to fall apart, but so slowly that nobody realized the damage. Without wolves to keep them in check, the elk population exploded. By the 1990s, there were nearly 19,000 elk in Yellowstone Northern Range alone. These elk transformed into living lawnmowers, consuming every young tree and shrub they could find. Aspen, willow, and cottonwood saplings didn't stand a chance. But what about hunting the elk to control their numbers? Well, wolves don't just kill elk. They change their behavior. This phenomenon is known as the ecology of fear. Without wolves around, elk just grazed endlessly, decimating young trees. But with wolves, elk had to stay vigilant and constantly move to avoid being ambushed. The presence of wolves forced elk to avoid certain areas, and this allowed young trees to start growing again. Now, back to 1995. After years of debate, the U.S. government decided to reintroduce wolves into Yellowstone. But the decision wasn't easy. Ranchers were worried about their livestock, and hunters feared the wolves would decimate their elk populations. Some even spread rumors of super wolves that would terrorize the region. In reality, the wolves chosen for reintroduction were carefully selected. They came from Canada, where they had experience hunting prey similar to what they would find in Yellowstone. The wolves were carefully monitored, and it was decided to choose animals with no prior conflict with humans or livestock. The reintroduction was like a scene from a movie. In January 1995, 14 wolves were brought into the park, carefully sedated and transported in separate crates. They were kept in acclimation pens for several weeks to adjust to their new environment before being released into the wild. Nobody knew if they would stay or leave, but not only did they stay, they thrived. And then, the magic started to happen. The wolves didn't just hunt, they changed everything. Scientists call this a trophic cascade, where one species' behavior has ripple effects throughout the ecosystem. First, the elk population started to drop, but not just because of hunting. The elk started behaving differently. They avoided valleys and rivers, places where wolves could easily ambush them. This allowed young trees to grow back along riverbanks. Aspen, willow, and cottonwood began to sprout again. These trees did more than just grow. They stabilized riverbanks, preventing erosion. The rivers themselves started to change, becoming more stable and clearer. And the changes didn't stop there. As the vegetation recovered, beavers returned to the park. Before the wolves came, there was only one beaver colony in Yellowstone. By 2012, there were nine, and scientists had trouble keeping track of them. Beavers are nature's engineers, and their dams created new wetland habitats, attracting species like frogs, fish, and birds. But the wolves' influence didn't end with beavers. 
Their presence even impacted the grizzly bears. When wolves make a kill, they often leave leftovers, elk carcasses, that provide food for other animals, including grizzly bears. And remember those berries the elk used to eat. With fewer elk around, berry bushes started to grow back. More berries meant more food for bears, especially in late summer, when they're preparing for hibernation. But here's something you won't believe. Scientists discovered that the wolves were even affecting Yellowstone's supervolcano. Yes, the volcano. Before the wolves return, overgrazing elk had compacted the soil so much that it affected the way underground heat was dispersed. When wolves changed the elk's behavior, vegetation started growing back and the soil became less compacted. This allowed heat to disperse more evenly, changing the underground dynamics of the park's geothermal features. Now, here's where the story gets truly interesting from an economic perspective. The economic benefits of the wolves' reintroduction were staggering. For starters, wolf watching alone generates around $35 million a year for the surrounding communities. But that's just the beginning. The recovering forests help capture and store carbon dioxide, an invaluable service for climate change mitigation. Healthier rivers reduce water treatment costs, and restored wetlands help prevent flooding and store water naturally. Even road maintenance costs were lowered. With fewer elk by the riverbanks, there was less erosion, which meant roads and bridges lasted longer and required fewer repairs. Of course, the wolf reintroduction wasn't without its challenges. In 2012, a wolf named 832F, also known as 06, one of the most famous wolves in the world, was shot just outside the park boundary. This sparked international outrage and highlighted one of the biggest challenges in wolf conservation. Once wolves leave the park, they're not protected. Some states have even established wolf hunting seasons, leading to heated debates. But here's the thing. Even when a wolf pack loses its leader, it doesn't fall apart. Wolves are remarkably resilient. They reorganize and adapt, which is a remarkable discovery in the field of animal behavior. Yellowstone's success has inspired similar projects around the world. Wolves are returning to places in Europe where they were wiped out centuries ago. And in Scotland, there's serious talk about reintroducing wolves to help control the deer population. The most important lesson from all of this isn't just about wolves. It's about how nature works in ways we're only beginning to understand. Those 14 Canadian wolves didn't just change Yellowstone. They changed how we think about conservation. They taught us that sometimes the best way to fix an ecosystem isn't to micromanage every detail, but to bring back the missing pieces and let nature heal itself. Today, there are around 528 wolves in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem, and they attract over 500,000 visitors every year, providing jobs, generating income, and making Yellowstone an even more incredible place.